Hello everyone and welcome to this month's best and worst of beauty. Can you believe it? February. I'm trying to think by the time you guys see this, I think it's still February, but in any case, it went by quickly. I know we've got a couple less days in February, but I feel like February went by quickly. Anyone else? Anyone else? Regardless of the usual chit chat about how quick or how slow a month has or has not gone by, I have got my monthly beauty favorites and non-favorites. I have got some not great products this month like they're going in the trash immediately after I film this and I have got some well I should say I have got one holy grail product here that I have found so I am very excited to tell you guys about these products go through the pyramid go from the worst product I tried out last month and climb our way up to the top to the best product I tried out so let's go ahead and sing the song together and then I can tell you about the products it's the best and worst of beauty whether good or bad, here's the down and dirty. Cha! I know, I added a little percussion. Was that what we would call it? Anyways, very exciting. Not very exciting. Bottom of the pyramid. I have got my least favorite product that I tried out this past month, and it was actually very hard to choose between this one and the next product on the pyramid. You could probably call them interchangeable, but either way, I thoroughly disliked this product from Anastasia. This is their, oh boy, can I read this tiny? I think it's just the Dip Brow Gel, and I have the shade Medium Brown. I chose to get this in a boxy charm, not too long ago and I was really excited about it you know Anastasia is supposed to be or at least used to be the queen of brows best brow products out there well this gel I know lots of people love it okay I am in the minority especially compared to reviews and stuff online but this just didn't do it for me the color was perfectly fine as far as I remember you know we've got a nice spoolie uh, the formula just way too wet for me way too wet and sticky I I did not like the way this went on my brows at all. I tried it out in that BoxyCharm video. I tried it out subsequently on two or three more days to try and get it to work, you know, really scrape off the product before applying it and all that stuff, brushing it out afterward. And no matter what I did, it just remained sticky and clumpy and I just did not like the way that this looked or felt on my brows. It just felt heavy and nasty. I did not like it. So like I said, I'm in the min minority, so maybe take my opinions with a grain of salt there, but uh, my opinion is my opinion, and that means this will be going promptly in the garbage. Now next up, like I said, this could have been the worst product. I really, I didn't know which offended me more. They both offended me deeply and greatly, and like I said, garbage it goes. It's this one here from e.l.f. This is the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara. I had gotten this because I did the My Boyfriend Buys My Makeup video and uh, he chose this one, this Big Mood Mascara, and I hate it. It's not, I shouldn't say it's not the worst, well I don't know what the worst mascara I've ever, actually I do. This is not the worst mascara I've ever tried, but it's certainly not good like at all it is hardly noticeable on the lashes like if you want that natural no makeup look where it actually kind of looks like you're not wearing makeup this might be the way to go but like it will not define your lashes hardly at all it will maybe give them a five to ten percent increase in the look and definition it's more of a fluffer than a definer in terms of volume or length and it flakes really really badly throughout the day at least on my eyes whether my eyes have been really irritated and itchy that day or not it's just not a good mascara for me thoroughly did not enjoy it tried it many times because I wanted to you know I'm always on the lookout for good drugstore mascaras but I can say with certainly for me at least anyways this is not one of them now, next up, last thing on the bottom of the pyramid here. This is actually this product. I actually really love this product, but if I had spent my own money on it, I don't know that I would be as thrilled. I mean, it's it's really, it's a lot of things. Um, I, I do love it though. And it is this one right here from Hourglass. This was their holiday palette. There were three of them, but this was the butterfly version for fair and light skin. And then there was, what was it, leopard, jaguar, something like that, cheetah, and then an elephant. Um, gorgeous palettes, gorgeous, gorgeous palettes. You know, like I said, it's 
it's your typical six pan holiday hourglass palette and it's beautiful. I've always wanted one of these but I've always resisted. Slap some butterflies on there. I actually feel like these look like more like moths just with the pattern. Am I wrong? I could be. I am not. Is it entomologist? The bug studiers? Uh, yeah. Slap that on there and I was sold. Um, <laughs> the reason this is so far down. A. These are so expensive. So expensive. What was it like $85? Like I said, I got this with Christmas money, so I don't feel as offended about not loving this whole thing because it wasn't my money that got spent on it. But I just personally, and I knew this going in, like it's no fault of Hourglass. I just, I only use half of this. I do not use these ones. I wish they were usable for me. And like they are, I could use them. They just are so subtle and do so little for my skin anyways, that I just don't take the time to use them. There are those nice diffuser powders that really give that soft glow to the skin, but I just have such oily skin that like, give me an hour and my skin will produce that soft glow in no time on its own. So yeah, I was hoping that this one would be more like a highlight because it kind of has that look to it and it certainly does have that teeny tiny bit. It's certainly more of a highlight than these two shades, but it does so little that I never reach for it. These three, however, are so good. Also a little disappointed, these two blush shades look almost identical on my cheeks. I usually just end up mixing them most days. They're beautiful, don't get me wrong. I just wish there would have been a little bit more differentiation. This highlight is liquid delight. It is so beautiful. Like I could use this every day for the rest of my life and be perfectly happy. And the blushes combined with them, I mean, I already knew I loved these hourglass blushes and whatnot, but like, Oh, it just reminded me how good they are. So, so good. Probably one of, if not my favorite blush formula ever. They blend so seamlessly. They're the perfect amount of pigmentation. You can build them up, blend them out, and they just give that soft glow to the cheeks where you just look like you're radiating from within in the most beautiful, glorious way. Oh, do I ever love them. And like I said, paired with this highlight, it is absolute stunning magic. However, like I said, do I think if I were to not have this in my life anymore and it were sitting on a shelf, would I repurchase it? No, I would not. However, I would go and purchase like a highlight and blush from Hourglass. Do they sell? Surely they sell highlights like this on their own. They should if they don't. I know, you know, they sell the marbly blushes and whatnot on their own. That's what I would spend my money on just so I didn't have this waste of space for me anyways. Oh, and also this thing hurts. Like it is a snap metal closure. If you get your finger stuck in there, oh my god, it's really painful. So that's also a negative. But like overall, I've been loving this palette. I just know that, you know, for me, there are some negatives that come with it. But for the most part, oh, this will stay in my collection forever purely for those three in the corner. I don't care that the other three don't get used. I will use those until they are gone. It might never happen in my lifetime, but I'm certainly gonna try because they are worth it. Now, moving on up, I don't think I mentioned, but I'm sure you would have already seen on the screen, we've just got a six product pyramid this month. Uh, so, moving on to the second tier of the pyramid, I have got the concealer that I have been trying out and using. This also came from the My Boyfriend Picks and Buys My Makeup video, and it is this Hourglass Concealer. I had wanted to try this, I forget exactly what it's called, the Vanish Concealer, I think. I've got the shade Silk here. Truth be told, a lot of why I wanted to try it was because I think the package is really cool. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm a sucker for good packaging and this is just a little, a little unique and special. Like, I don't know, what, is it a rhombus, this shape? Listen, it's been a long time since I've been in a math class and uh, either way, I just, I really enjoy the shape of this. It feels good in the hand. That frosted, I think it's plastic, but you know, that frosted glass. <laughs> 
<laughs> bottle. Um, it's a little messy. I don't know why. It just splutes out all over the place on the top portion, but the concealer itself is really nice. It's not my favorite concealer ever made, but I do like it, and I'll certainly go through this tube when I repurchase it. I don't think so, but it is perfectly nice, you know? It's not an exact shade match for me, uh, especially not in the winter here when I'm a little paler, as you can see in my application portion of the video here. Definitely not a great shade match, but like it works enough, especially once I've got foundation on top of it. It's pretty full coverage. It does a really nice job at covering blemishes for the most part. It's a little on the dry matte looking side for me. I wish it had a little bit more hydration to it, but other than that it blends out nicely. It lasts all day and I really like it. It's a perfectly nice concealer. Like I said, I wouldn't tell anyone to go run and get your hands on it, but like if you want to try it, I certainly wouldn't tell you to not. So, Perfectly good concealer. Moving on. Now, second to the top on the pyramid, this is the product that broke the internet the past month or two. My goodness. Do you know exactly what it is? Yes, it is this mascara from L'Oreal. It's the telescopic lift mascara. I've got the regular one and I've got the waterproof one because I've got problematic eyes and, you know, if you watched that video, I went in depth as to why I purchased both of them. But either way, I wanted to do a review video on these mascaras just like everyone else here on YouTube after seeing the TikTok drama around these and you guys, <laughs> it's a really good mascara. It's certainly not the best mascara I've ever tried in my life, but it does a darn good job and I think the waterproof one is certainly going to become a staple in my makeup repertoire here. It's a really good waterproof mascara if you need that like I do, if you have a problematic watery eye like I do, or eyes, uh, it's certainly waterproof. It's really, really good. I have no problems with flaking and smudging with this guy. Uh, maybe like a couple flakes throughout the day, but like nothing of note. Same with the regular version. I don't think I've cried with this one on, so I can't tell you about that, but it's really good. I'm just noticing there's an R on these. Why? Telescopic starts with a T. Do you see that? There's an R. And on the tops, L'Oreal starts with an L. What is that all about? Do we know? Curious. Hmm. Okay, either way. Well, the formula does differ a bit on these. The waterproof one is a bit more wet and clumpy, I would say. Both of these mascaras do give a bit of that clumpy spidery look, so if you're not into that, you're not going to like these mascaras. I don't think it's too offensive, and you can certainly comb it out for the most part, but it does have that look overall, and I think it gives great length to the lashes, a little bit of volume as well, but certainly more of a defining lengthening mascara, and it does a pretty dang good job. The wand is interesting. It's got the flat side to it. I I don't know. On the packaging, it doesn't say that you're supposed to use the flat side for any reason. I do use it because like it does get a good amount of mascara on there and I just like waddle that onto my lashes and then I brush it out with the bristle side and I think it does a great job at getting mascara onto the lashes. So I use it. I don't think you're supposed to, but I feel like it's there. It should be there for a reason, so I give it a reason to exist. And like I said, I perfectly enjoy the mascara. It's a little heavy on the lashes throughout the day, but overall it, for the most part, stays in place, holds a curl on the lashes, and like I said, I think the waterproof version is definitely becoming a staple in my makeup repertoire. <laughs> Now, as I said, do you remember? I've got a holy grail product here that I have discovered, and oh my gosh, you guys, I'm honestly kind of mad at myself for waiting this long, because like I said, it's holy grail, and this product has existed for a long time. It is this right here. This is the Lorac Behind the Scenes Eye Primer, Eyeshadow Primer. It is everything reviews ever said it was, you guys. I had known about this primer because it always came with Lorac palettes. They gave you a little mini of it. And I remember reading reviews back in the day where people would say, you know what, honestly, half the time I just buy Lorac palettes so that I get the free little mini primer. And I was like, dang, that must be really good. 
but like these were reviews that I was reading in grad school and whatnot. I didn't have the extra money to spend on a $40, $50 Lorac palette just to get a mini primer. So I never tried it out until now. I have been on the hunt because my eyeshadow primers have not been working as well as they used to. I don't know if my lids have gotten oilier or what. However, I needed a new eyeshadow primer and so I decided to give this one a try and like I said you guys, this is holy grail. I am really upset that I waited as long as I did. This stuff is phenomenal. I can't, well I can say a bad thing about it, but for the most part I can't say a bad thing about this stuff. It does everything you want an eyeshadow primer to do. It makes eyeshadow glide on so seamlessly and smoothly onto the lids. It is sticky and tacky, so you would think that eyeshadow would not apply smoothly, but it does. And then it grips it all day. No creasing, no fading. My eyeshadow looks exactly the same way it does, or the same way that it did when I first applied it, as it does at the end of the night. It is miraculous. I don't know how it does it, but every time, every time, I have never been disappointed with this eyeshadow primer. It is phenomenal. And like I said, the only bad thing, there is a bad thing, it's just kind of stiff in here. You just kind of have to warm it up. It's a little stiff to squeeze out. But like I said, aside from that, it's perfectly easy to apply to the lids, perfectly easy to apply eyeshadow on top of it, and does perfect at holding your eyeshadow all day. Like I said, I will never buy another eyeshadow primer again unless they reformulate this which please I just found it please do not change it now but yeah I will never buy another eyeshadow primer this is holy grail this is the best I've ever used and I don't know how it would get any better I really don't so this eyeshadow primer highly recommend it it's a beaut. So yeah, my friends, that is it. That is my best and worst of beauty for February of 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good product recommendations and non-recommendations from me. You can certainly, as always, let me know in the comments down below, A, if you have tried out any of these products and you agree or disagree with me, you are allowed to feel that way. And also just what were your best and worst of beauty products? What were you loving and hating this past month? Is there anything that you think I should give a try? Just let me know all of the things down in the comments below. You can also let me know if you enjoyed the video by giving it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you're new here, hey, hi, hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe by tippity tapping that notification bell down below and becoming a member of my casserole family here on my channel. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. Until next time, just stay well until then. Bye!